Hello friends! Since last week's video was released where I showed how to erase parts of an imported photo, I've had a few questions asking where you might use this. So I thought I'd put together a real world example of why you'd want to erase part of an imported image as part of editing an image. And there's really just two reasons why you want to erase part of your image. Firstly, to remove part of the image so that you can adjust it. To remove parts you don't want, or to duplicate part of it. And that's what I'll do today. But secondly, you might want to adjust your image to separate it into layers, to be able to animate them, maybe to add a parallax field to the background. And that's what we'll look at next week, building on what we do today. So do subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss that. And I'm really looking forward to seeing how that turns out. So first, let's add the photos. And I've got three photos that I'm going to use today. First, there's a church from a nearby town with a photo taken from the front. And then at the side of the church is an old battered phone box that I wanted to use. So I thought I'd edit this to include it at the front. And finally, I thought I'd show how to change the sky behind everything. So I took a separate photo of the sky. And having a separate photo of the sky will be really useful next week when we start to animate these images. But first, as I mentioned last week, as they're all taken straight from my camera, they're all JPEG files. So I need to convert them to PNG so I can erase parts of them. And you can use any program you have or even OpenToons itself. You can simply add the photo to a frame and render out that frame as a PNG image. But today for simplicity, I'll use Paint 3D that comes with Windows. So if we just right click and choose Open with Paint 3D. And that opens in a separate window. And then I can simply choose to save as an image and then change the save as type to PNG. And while I'm changing the image type, let's also consider the name. Remember, I recommended not having numbers, dots or underscores in your image name unless you want to use it as an image sequence. And next week we'll do exactly that. But for today, I won't be using multiple copies of these images, so I'm happy to name them just with text. So this image, I'll just change its name to be Church. And then hit Save. And you'll see the new PNG file appear on disk. So I'll just do the same with the other two. So now I've got the church, the phone box, and the sky photos, all as PNG images. So now you can simply drag them in to an open scene. So let's start a new project. And I can drag the photos into this scene. And as I explained last week, if you choose to import them, you'll take a local copy in your project, which means I can delete these photos from this temporary location. So let me first just rename all the columns. I'll put the sky at the back, with the church in front, and the phone box in front of that. And as you can see, each photo is about twice as large as the camera view. So I'll need to resize them to fit them within the camera. But I'll do that later once I've finished editing them. So let's start off with the church photo. So the first thing I'll do is I'll hide the sky and the phone box so I can only see the church photo. And then selecting in frame one, I choose the animate tool and I'll adjust the scale by clicking and dragging until the photo is roughly within the camera area there. And then if I right click, I can choose fit to window, which will make the camera view fit to the available space on screen. So let's just save that. So everything I'm doing today, you can do in any other image editing program 
but I just wanted to show you how possible it was to do this inside OpenTunes. So for this photo, I want to erase the sky so I can place the sky photo behind it. So if I choose the eraser tool, and when choosing to erase, you want to use each of the different types of erasure from this drop down list on the tool options bar. So let me show you all of them now. So the standard erase mode is to use the eraser as a standard eraser, where you just rub up and down to delete part of your image. And as you notice, as you erase, you can see through to the white camera colour behind this photo. So one other option you might want to use while you're using the standard normal eraser is the hardness option here on the options toolbar. And as you can see, the edge of where I've erased is quite sharp. And when you're erasing around a photo, you'll often want to have a bit of an anti-aliasing effect to give a more subtle look to the erasing. So if I just erase at the side here, you'll see it's now quite blurred where I'm erasing. And that can be very handy, especially when you're erasing around these trees. Okay, so the second type is a rectangular erase. And for that, you just simply click and drag to draw a rectangle and that will be erased. And that's really handy for erasing large areas. And then we've got the freehand erase. And with that, you can simply draw a shape to erase a large freehand area. And finally, we've got polyline. And if I zoom in to the church here, you'll see where this is handy to draw a polyline shape against the sides of a straight object. So to use the polyline eraser, you simply click to place a point, then click again for the next point, and again, and again, on every point to create a straight lined edge to delete against, and then double click to close the shape, and that will be deleted. So this is really handy when you've got straight edges to what you're trying to delete. And I'll be using this all around the outside of the church. So I'll use a combination of all those tools to erase the sky from this image, and I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so here's the church with the sky erased from behind it. And I think I probably picked one of the worst photos you could for doing this, for erasing around the edges of the trees. So if I just show the sky level behind the church, there we go. And the blue in this sky photo is quite a bit darker than the sky was when I first took the photo of the church. So erasing around the edges of the trees was pretty difficult. So it looked like the edges of the trees had snow on it, with the whiter, lighter sky behind it. But one tip I'll give you is that I reduced the opacity of the eraser and just erased the edge of the tree a little bit, which made it a little bit fuzzy so you couldn't notice the old sky behind it so easily. And if we go back to the full screen, you can see it there, not too bad. So the final eraser I wanted to do was for the phone box photo. So let's just zoom out so we can see the whole photo, and then I'll use the rectangular eraser for this image. It'll be much easier to delete the larger areas of the image. Let's hide the other two photos so we can see the camera better and the drawing area to more easily see what we've erased. And then take away this top part and the bottom. Now I can zoom in and be more accurate. Okay, so again, I use the polyline tool so I can more easily draw a straight line at the sides of the phone box here. And I now use the freehand tool across the top curve. And reducing the hardness, so I can go quite close up to the edge here. Good, that'll probably be okay. So let's bring back the church image, and then using the animate tool on the phone box image, let's scale that, and I'll use the all option, so I can scale that down and then position it where I want to have the phone box image. And the image is quite bright, so I'll darken that with an effect shortly. The original photo is quite bright, so I'll darken that image. And we can do it in two ways. Firstly, we can use the effects to apply an effect to that column. But the easiest way 
is to simply use the adjust option in the level menu and then choose to adjust the brightness, contrast or the levels. So let's try the brightness and contrast first. So bring the brightness down. That's not too bad. Let's hit apply and see how that looks. That's much better. I think we'll add a little bit more. So again, we'll adjust the brightness and then bring that down a little bit further and hit apply. Good, so that's the image I was after. Three photos making one single background image. But as you can see, it's shown as three columns and two of them have got animation keys on them. So if you're using this as a background for your animation, you've got extra details on screen that you don't really want. So there's two things we can do about this. The first one is to collapse the three columns into a sub X sheet. And that's handy if you want to come back and potentially edit parts of these photos. So to do that, you just click and drag over the column headers to highlight all three columns. And then you right click and choose collapse. And now they're all in one sub X sheet and shown as a single column on your timeline. So you can name that and it shows as a single image that you can extend for as long or short as you'd like. So now you can use it as though it's a single static image. And if you want to go back and make any further changes, you can simply click on any frame in the sub X sheet and then click the button here to open the sub X sheet. And now you can see all three columns again, adjust the scale with the animate tool, apply new effects, maybe even duplicate a column to have another phone box on the other side of the screen. And then when you're ready, you can click this button here to close the sub X sheet and go back to the main timeline where you'll see your changes shown on a single column. And the second alternate way for using these multiple photos is to simply render them out as a single image. So if you go to your output settings and then change the frame start and end to both be on frame one and then choose an image file format from the drop down here. I'll choose PNG. Then give the file a new name and hit render. And now it'll render your file to a single image on disk. You can drag that into your scene and use it as a single image as you would any other image. So here's the final result. And I think it looks pretty convincing as a single photo, even though it's made up of three different photos. And as I said at the start, you could do some of this in an image editing program, but by editing the photo in OpenTunes, you can use some of the features that you already know, including painting over the top of this, which I didn't do today. So you could choose to add extra shadows, highlights, clouds on the background, or whatever you need for this image. But today I wanted to concentrate on erasing the image and showing what you can do. So I hope you can see how and why you can erase parts of the image, as I did here to use a different sky, and to insert just a small part of a different photo of the phone box into the image too. So why not include your own photos as a background to your animations? erasing the parts you don't need and joining together the parts you do. So have a go and see what you can come up with. And I hope you can join me next week when I'll be doing some more editing of this photo to create an animated background. So I'll see you there. And that's a guarantee. Mm -hmm.